the the sovereignty of God is really his his rule and his authority to rule and reign. Um, oftentimes we get his sovereignty and his providence, you know, mixed up. And his providence is, is the, the way and the means in which he exercises his sovereignty. Um, but he, he is the sovereign of all sovereigns. He has all authority. He has every right to everything. Um, and so that's what it means for God to be sovereign. He doesn't ask permission for anything. He, he's seated in the heavens, as the psalmist says, and he does whatever pleases him. We're offended by the sovereignty of God because we want self-sovereignty. We, we want to rule. Um, we don't mind there being a God as long as it's us. And sovereignty means that I have to bow to another, that I am not in control, and we don't like that. We need to be saved from the wrath of God. We need to be saved from the penalty of our sin. Um, we are guilty before God. All have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God, right? And the wages of sin is death. So we owe a debt to God. And because of that debt, we deserve death and hell and the grave um, and, and nothing else. And there's nothing that we can do in and of ourselves to rectify that. Uh, consequently, we need someone outside of us to rescue us, to redeem us, to save us. The Order Salutis is incredibly important because it helps us to understand um, more broadly the, the magnitude of our salvation, the significance of our salvation, right? That, that we are justified um, and that we are adopted and that we're sanctified and that we're glorified. Um, and interestingly enough, we usually forget the adoption, you know, in that part. But the Order Salutis helps us to get a bigger picture of the magnitude of our salvation and really of the of the complete nature of our salvation right from from beginning to end um, the the past tense present tense and future tense of our salvation and it it helps us to walk in in security faith is absolutely a gift from god um, we we are fallen people and in our fallenness, um, there is nothing in us that could or even would turn to God. It is, it is only through God's grace, through his gift, um, that we are able to turn to God in faith. The church has to guard against any forms of work-based salvation because we're prone to it. Man is prone to works righteousness. We want to justify ourselves. Um, you know, we, we sit, and even when we listen to sermons, right, we sit there and listen to sermons waiting for the things that we're told to do because we want to do something. We want to be able to define our relationship with God based on what we've achieved and what we've accomplished. And so because of that, it's really important that we're always on guard against satisfying that desire in ourselves and in others. CRT and intersectionality are very dangerous because they represent another gospel. They represent a false gospel. Uh, they represent uh, an ideology that is not only contrary to uh, biblical theology and worldview, uh, but it's um, hostile towards biblical worldview and theology. Sanctification is essential uh, to the believers, part of the order salutis, right? We, we're justified, we're adopted, we're sanctified, and, and, and then we're glorified, right? Sanctification, in, in an earthly sense, is the, the long part of that. Um, you know, we're, we're justified, declared righteous. That's great. 
that happened. It's past. We're adopted, right, and brought into the family of God. That's great. That happened. It's in the past. We're, we're sanctified, declared righteous, and then made righteous progressively as we're conformed to the image of Christ. That's the long haul. Um, the only thing longer than that is our, our glorified state, right? So sanctification, this side of heaven, is everything. When we think of the glory of God, we should think of his, his majesty. We should think of um, his holiness. We should think of the fact that God is not like us or like anything else. When we think of the glory of God, oftentimes we talk about the glory of God. We talk about, you know, giving God glory. We, we, we in a, in one sense, we really can't give God glory because his glory cannot be increased. He doesn't need anyone to give him glory. All glory is his. All honor is his. And so he is the very epitome of glory. He is the essence of glory. And glory is his essence. The promise that we'll be glorified one day is the promise that we will be like God. Um, that we will have glorified bodies, that we will be delivered from sin, that we will be without spot or blemish, um, as Paul would say in Ephesians chapter 5. Um, but that will not be our own glory. It will still be God's glory. So God is actually magnifying his own glory through sharing that glory with us. The greatest need facing the church in any hour is fidelity to the Word of God and the God of the Word. That is always our greatest need. There, there is always some new um, emergency going on, like every generation faces its own troubles and trials. And when those troubles and trials come, the, the need is always the same. It, it is fidelity to the word of the God, to, to the word of God, and fidelity to the God of the word. Um, whatever we're facing, it is something that is coming against the word of God. You know, as Paul puts it, you know, we destroy arguments and lofty opinions raised against the knowledge of God. Right? Every generation has to do that and take every thought captive to obey Christ. Again, fidelity to the Word of God and to the God of the Word. G3 is a blessing to me personally because of the long history and relationship that I've had with the ministry. I, I remember the early meetings, you know, at, at, at Praise Mill and, um, just this idea at the time um, of of coming together um, around the basics, around the essentials, uh, coming together um, really around the the primacy of the gospel in the local church, uh, and to see God's hand in that, and to see God bless that, um, has been uh, really encouraging to me. The relationships that have been established. Um, you know, a lot of the, the guys that I call my dearest friends, um, I've met through my participation in, in G3 over the years. Um, and then in terms of the body, um, I, I think, especially during this season, um, when we've seen a lot of people and a lot of ministries go off the rails, it's been really encouraging to see ministries like G3 hold the line.